You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. Hey, Bible students, welcome back to Christadelphian Videos. We are working through this theme in this set of videos on the great and precious promises that God makes to us in his word. And it's not exhaustive. It's just that we've taken these to illustrate to those who observe, who, who watch, who, who read, and who study beyond it, that this is the great way in which God has attracted us to him, that he makes promises that he keeps. Now, we've gone quite a ways on this. We have gone through uh, this word "graw," which you can make if you pronounce it, which is standing for great promises, resurrection, angels, work. We've been through this one, forgiveness, the inner man shall be added, honor and glory. We've been through this one, the glorious body, overrule, or, or overcome rather and rule, never leave you a way of escape. And now we're looking on our last group, that is the God who hears our prayers. And this is a wonderful promise because there is no other God that can hear prayers. Our God is the one God that hears prayers. And look at what it says. This is probably the highest calling that we can have in prayer is in 1 John chapter 4, verses 14 to 15 where he says, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now, like many of the other promises, we have to understand that there are conditions to be met. God doesn't do this with anybody that just comes to him and reads his Bible and says, well, I can pray to God. We need to learn about this so that that promise can be effective in our life because it is a wonderful thing. I mean, you look at all the cell phones and all the electronic means that people have of communicating with one another. But God knows what we want before we ask him. He knows our motive in asking. He knows our thoughts. But he still wants to hear us vocalize it. He still wants to hear us ask what we want. So this is a, another level altogether of communication, and it is very helpful, very rewarding. See, man-made objects cannot hear. If that's not obvious, well, it can be made obvious by the Word of God, where God warned people not to get attracted by these things. So Moses, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 28, says, and there will serve there you will serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there you will seek Yahweh your God, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. So God says, look, if you want these other gods, which people call gods, but they cannot hear, they cannot eat, they cannot smell, they cannot see then you go and get your other gods. You'll come back. And it may not have been the actual person that came back or the persons that come back, but in time, the nation came back because there was no future with gods that could not hear. And yet we see these images all over the world. And looking at history, we find that this has been throughout history that people have worshipped a god related to what they made with their own hands. But look at the privilege that God has given to people who pray to him properly. Prayer to Yahweh is a great privilege. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble. Psalm 50, verses 15 to 17. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth, seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you? And this is one of the first things we learn about this idea of prayer 
is we might think because prayer really is us talking to God that there is no other communication, but no, that's not the way it is. And you can see in that last verse, verse 17, seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. Well, God's words are his answer. It may be what we're responding to when we talk to God. It's a two-way thing, and it's very important for us to understand that. So Jesus taught us, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. There always needs to be that feeling, that, that spirit of humility when you come to God. It is a privilege, a great privilege, to talk to the creator of the universe, to talk to the person who made us, who designed us. That's what prayer to God, the God of the Bible, is like. You think God can answer quickly? Well, this example of Hezekiah is a deathbed prayer. No, it's not that God tells us, you know, if you talk this way to me on your deathbed, no matter where your deathbed is, no matter what time in life it is, I will answer you. Now, you have to think a little bit about Hezekiah while you're thinking these thoughts. You see, it was the time of the first temple. It was a, a, a matter of Hezekiah being cut off in the middle of his life. But he was told initially that he would die. And before Isaiah, who told him that, got out of the building, like he was on his way home, we would think that the word of God came to him to go back to Hezekiah and say this, return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus saith Yahweh, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of Yahweh. Now, Hezekiah was just overjoyed. It, it wasn't that he, he, uh, didn't believe God, he was overjoyed. That was the relationship this man had with this God. And so it would be worth studying the life of Hezekiah to see how he managed to get that kind of a relationship. And it's there in the word. So that's an example of how quickly God hears prayer and decides what to do about it. It doesn't always happen that way, but it could happen that way. And if we have built our life upon believing that this God, Yahweh, is our God, then we might expect that God will hear and will respond to us, and maybe quickly as well. Here's another example. Yahweh heard the prayer of David, because David strengthened himself to approach the God in prayer. Now, it could have been at this time that he would have been so vanquished that he would might have just said, well, boy, God let me down. I went out, and, and when I came back, the city I lived in was burned. The people are all gone. All my possessions are gone. And David's men were not very good about this because they were hostile. They were actually ready to stone David. But David was a man of God. He knew his God, Yahweh. He knew he needed to pray to God. And look at what it says. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8, David inquired of Yahweh, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Now, David didn't, you know, become vacillating. Well, I wonder if God really means this based on what's happened. No, he started immediately to prepare to go and do what God had said, knowing he would recover all. You see, it's so important to have that understanding of our God before we talk to him. And, and better still, to listen for his answer afterwards, which may very well be for us in our day and age, that we read his word. And in reading his word, we see what maybe we had missed before the answer that we should have maybe known before we even got into that controversy or that difficulty. Now, that's sure true of this man, Jonah. God heard Jonah's prayer, and he said, you heard my voice. Well, what would be unusual about that? Well, it's where Jonah was. So in Jonah chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, it says, Jonah prayed to Yahweh, his God, from the fish's belly. He said, I cried out to Yahweh because of my affliction. 
and he answered me. Out of the belly, the belly of Sheol, I cried, and you heard my voice. So when the reader of the Bible reads these things, and we are a Bible student, like we really spend our time there looking at these things, there can't be any place we could be where God wouldn't hear us if we prayed. And what a comforting thing that is. Because one of the things that probably would be terror to us is to be in a position where there is no possible way that anybody could hear us. God can always hear prayer no matter where we are. And God can provide a way of escape. Even though the way of escape came after three days and three nights in the belly of that fish. Oh, there's a lot of instruction in prayer. Wonderful instruction. You see, God wants to be part of a conversation. We got to listen to God's voice. This little proverb tells us how God views it when we don't. We don't listen to him. So Proverbs 28, verse 9, one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. If you're not going to listen to God, then God will treat your talking to him as an abomination. He, he doesn't want it. We've got to turn to God. And God will turn to us. That is always the way it is. Turn to God. Open his book. Read what it has to say. If it tells us to do something which is painful, do it. If you really expect God to hear our prayer and bless us at the other end. That's the idea of it. Look at this idea of Jesus praying to his God, Yahweh, to ask uh, our request that we might wonder if, if anybody could ever do this by just asking to God. But Jesus was very close to God. He was so close to God that God constantly was answering his prayers, constantly healing people. But Martha, who observed this, in John 11, verse 21, said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. That was faith. No wonder it says that Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus, a wonderful family of faith. And so we know what happened, that Jesus called Lazarus after praying to God. He called Lazarus out of the tomb. And here's a man who was wound up in grave clothes who came out. He was living. They loosed him and, and away he went. That's the power of prayer. That's what our God can do. Now, praying for others is another aspect of it. And Jesus taught us this because in Luke 22, verses 31 and 32, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. And Jesus knew what Peter would go through. Because Peter was so, well, he was assuring himself that he would never deny his Lord. I'll never deny you. Jesus knew that Peter was not ready for that kind of witness. And after three times saying to people that he didn't even know Jesus, he came to his senses when the rooster crowed and the Lord looked at him. And he knew. That when Jesus had prayed for him, that God had answered him and saved him out of a real difficult jam he was in, not knowing it. And even Jesus prayed for help for himself. And his father said an angel. In Luke 22, verses 41, it says, he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him, because it was not God's will that he should be removed from this cup, this experience he had to go through. But you can see how Jesus would pray to God in his earnestness of how he was going to have the strength to do this. And God was very gracious to him, sent an angel to strengthen him, but he had to go through 
that horrible experience of crucifixion. So, Bible students, yeah, God hears our prayer. And so when you see this passage in 1 John 5 that says, if we ask anything according to his will, you can see that there's, there's a lot of substance to prayer that we may be missing by just going to this passage too quickly without seeing that it's according to God's will. So if we search the Bible and find out what is God's will, what is it God wants us to do? What will he be happy if we do? And we pray to him. We know that he hears us whatsoever we ask. We know we have the petitions we desired of him. That's quite a promise. And those of us who have lived long enough to experience the answers that God gives to us, it's a wonderful reward to see how God does that. So that's our, our promise for today. And Lord willing, in our next one, we're going to talk about understanding. Because you see, understanding leads to happiness. It talks about how it will make us feel so much better, so much better assured that we're on the right road that leads to everlasting life. That's next week. Until then, may God bless your study of his word. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at bt f at cdvideo.org if you enjoyed the episode then please share it with others until next time may god bless you in your studies and your walk towards god's kingdom amen